go. Um, can everyone see the ground? Good. And then can you see me? Yeah. I'll just let the timers. So our first drill is our box drill, first of all. So we're going to have our, our right foot, first of all, in front of us. And all we're going to do is we're going to step back, take the feet to the floor. We're going to step forward to the box to the roof. So right foot forward. We're going to split two minutes each leg just to warm up that leg, first of all. So we're going to step uh, back and take the box to the floor. We're going to take push the knee straight. And then we step forward, put the box just up onto the roof. So stepping back. The right foot stays completely welded to the floor. When we come forward, the foot stays welded to the floor as well. So back way, when we step what we call supination, forward, we're in the pronation. The straight leg, straight leg. And we're just going to wake up the calves, wake up the hamstring, wake up hip flexors, get a hip joint moving. And also get the ankle joint movement as well. So when we come forward, the ankle joint closes out. When we go back, the ankle joint opens up. When we come forward, the hip joint opens up. So we really push the hips through. And as we come back, the hip joint closes. So we're just going to go through nice and slowly, nice and controlled as we work through our box jump. Very simple, very easy. Get the mobility in that leg. I really stress again, if you do have a marathon this weekend, um, you might want to take one of the sets out of each of the drills we do. If it's working pretty hard, you don't want to carry the fatigue into the weekend to start with. So you be the best judge of what we're doing. We've got two nice new drills today. Um, that are going to really connect the, the shoulders to the lower limb. It'll be quite cool as well. 30 seconds, guys. I'm going to switch sides over. So nice and easy, nice and controlled. Really get that hinge in the hip from our leaning back. So really try and push the hips back. So you can pop your hands just like the front of your calves and push that hip back. Really try and stretch that bottom back the way it's up. Push that back. Here you go. Push that. Three, two, one hand switch over left leg forward this time. Okay, so left leg forward, hands to the ground, stepping forward. You'll feel a little stretch on what we call the posterior chain, which is your hamstrings, glutes, calf, even underneath the fascia at the bottom of the foot, depending on where your, your tightness is. It's very really good for you. After a minute, we're going to switch the hands to the hips to push that hip back to get the hinge. Really work in this week. Start off, hands to the floor, hands to the roof. Good work. Just nice and slow and controlled. Start with your range, working into your own restrictions. And we're going to pop our hands on the hips and just really push the head back. Pull the hip under. Push the head back. Really get that hinge as we step back, then step forward. Tuck that pelvis. You should feel that pelvis rocks forward and backwards as we're moving through the range here to start. Then as we step back, ankle opens, head closes. As we step forward, ankle closes, hip opens. So it's a good one for getting the whole of that chain of muscles, joints, ligaments, tendons, everything just working together. The joints are active, the muscles are reacting. 10 seconds, so just 10 seconds to go. And five, three, two, one and relax it. This next exercise, you're going to need your TheraBand if you've got one. If you don't have one, do not panic. It's absolutely fine. So I'm just going to get you put the band around about your. Shall I come back in again? Put your band around about your knees. 
And I'm going to show you here just now, but have a roll there if you need to as well. So we're going to start on our left leg. So it's our left leg. We're in a single leg stand position. We're in a hinge position here. And all we're going to do is we take that leg out, just against the band. The key principle of the drill is to be all on the left hand leg, slowly moving the hip into abduction to start there. What it looks like from the side, you're going to be into a hip hinge position and you're just taking the leg out and back in. We're starting in five seconds, guys. It's going to be, we've got one minute, three sets each side. Okay, we're going to start. Left leg, hands will be positioned. Right hand in the front of the hip, we're hinging forward. We need to get the back of the glute opened up so the glute max is working. And then we're going to start with our abduction now. Up we go, good work. Use a wall for stability if you need to. It's not a balanced drill. And the movement of the leg up to the side will make you work that wee bit harder. So keep your hinge good. Out to the side, good work. Push against that bed of the side. If you wish to explore by holding it to the side for the whole time, please do. Otherwise, just keep the pulse in it. If you don't have the band, keep the abductions or the abduction of the hip nice and super slow. Good work. 15 seconds. Press down through the foot, keep the hinge as clean as possible. Keep it there, don't let your back bend. Three, two, one, switch over. Right foot this time, Barbara. Good. Hinge at the hip. And up the Keep that hinge good. Out to the side. Allowing that to compensate by leaning with the upper back. It all comes from the hip itself. Press into the ground with the foot. Super, super slow, super, super composed with the abduction. Then you can explore by holding out to the side for a pause for five, ten seconds. The time of attention is a minute. What you do in that minute is entirely up to you. Explore what makes you work that little bit harder. Generally speaking, speed slow is a lot trickier than speed fast. Five, three, two, one back onto the left hand side. Good job. Back onto the left hand side. Make the hinge good. Don't worry about the abduction until we're in a good hinge position. Get hinge, then off you go. Back to this one. Right in the out wide. Have your left hand on your left hip at the same time so you can feel the tension in the glutes. You can also pop your hand on the right hand side and feel the tension in the right glutes. So we're working one hip to stabilize, one hip to mobilize. So slightly different roles for the muscle itself. One is keeping that pelvis level on the left hand side, and one is really trying to pull out the right to the side. So it's a dynamic on the right. Left bend to the ground. Five, three, two, one. Stand up tall through that leg. We're over onto the right hand side this time. Right hand side. Hinge, make it good. Make it all about the hinge first. Don't worry about the second part. Hinge is good. Off we go. Chest long, speed slow, tension high.
Halfway there, guys. Halfway there. Keep the speed slow. You don't have the band to start. Explore, holding the leg out to the side, and then reducing your contact with the wall if you can. Really make that stance leg work hard. 15 seconds. Five, three, two, one, and back out with the tongue. Last set, guys, last set. Left leg. Clean hinge, then go to abduction. So don't worry about the second part until the first part is complete. So find your position. Off the go. Feel the tension, make sure the tension stays all the time. You need to feel anything into the calf and the hamstring, good work or work that pushes the chain, but it should all be pretty much in the way that you saw. Relax the toes, press down to the middle of the toes. Enjoy. Ten seconds. Two, one. Last one, guys. On the right hand side next. Right hand side next. And inch. Good job. Take recovery if you need to, take more rest if you need to, use more support for the wall if you have to, use less if you want to challenge yourself. Allow the body to find a way, rather than using the wall, let that body find a way to compensate. As long as the hinge is good, the foot can move, your body will move, your knee will move as well, halfway. Five seconds, just keep everything else key. Hinge is good. 15 seconds. Three, two, one, and relax the good work. Pop the bands just to the sides. Not going to come again, just nice and pop the side. Grab your foam roller and also grab your mat. And I'm going to show you what the next set section is about. So it's going to be 30 seconds of each movement. And there's four movements we're going to do. And we're going to do them three times two. So the first one is we're going to go on our back. We're going to have the foam roller at the right leg and the left arm. And we're just going to really press for that 30 seconds. We're then going to switch it the opposite direction. 30 seconds, we're then going to go same side for 30 seconds, and we're then going to go opposite side for 30 seconds to start. And we'll go through that three times to roll in forward. You can, if you want to, extend the arm and leg. It makes you work a little bit harder. If you want to just do the hold, I'm just going to do the hold today. If you want to do anything else, you can start to slowly um, introduce a heel tap, or you can extend the leg through out. Any symptoms in your back flow, just bring it back to static pose. So, you're starting in five seconds. You're going to be the right knee, left forearm, other leg, other arm are off the ground, and you're pushing your mind with the left arm, arm into the right hand knee. So, ready, 30 seconds, off of a press. Push the back down into the floor. Keep the breathing nice and deep through the nose and all the way out of the can. So no shallow breathing. Try and get that length of breath. Three, two, one. Change over. 
Left knee, right hand, straight in. Keep the breathing controlled. Really push. The harder you push, the harder you work. The less you push, the less you work. Keep the breathing. Keep reaching with that spare hand as well. Three, two, one. Left side only. Left side only. Hold it here. Good work. Breathing. You can control. We are trying to fill that whole lung filled up. Feel your lower back pressing into your mat. Try not let it arch up. Keep that back down. Really tip that pelvis towards it. Change over. Right hand side work for us. Hold in this position. Keep the breathing nice and controlled. Keep the reach active. Really, really reach with the hand itself. And back to second set. Diagonal. Left hand, right knee. Breathe deep. Position gates. If you want to add in the leg drops, please do. And switch over left knee, right hands. Now look again. Hip flexors will start to work as well. Just be in this position here. Your lower back struts this down. Same side. If you need to drop down in between, please do stay leg out of it. Press the lower back down, keep that back pressing down, keep the breath deep. And last one, change over, it's going to be the right hand side plank. Last five seconds, guys. <laughs> keep the reach good, keep the breath good, keep the back pressure good through the lower back. In 10 seconds, hip flexors are working now, quads are probably working with it now. More of the anterior chain, the abdominals, hip flexors, and quads. Everything's important. If you need three, two, one, and back to good work, good work, good work. Top four rows to the side. We've got one last drill to go through. A new drill again, and it's what we call cross connect. And so for here, we're going to take our right elbow to our left knee, okay? So we're going to start in our hinge position, our right elbow. We're going to come down to our left knee. We're going to hold in that position for about 15 seconds. And then we come up through range, tap, and then we come back down into that position there, okay? So again, a lot of glutes, a lot of um, hamstring, quad, a lot of work there. We're going to go a minute, and it's going to be two, three sets of this each side, okay? So left leg forward, right elbow. Back foot can be touching the ground and no more, but no weight through it. We're going to soften our knee to allow our elbow to come down. Once the elbow touches the knee, the timer starts. So ready? Then we come, hold, 15 seconds here. Press the elbow into the knee, glutes long.
Ready and drive up. Tap off the side. And back down, we're coming down. Back legs down for balance only. Elbow touches. Good work. Press through the ground, press through the elbow. Ready and drive through. Tap. Back down the car. Last 10 seconds, hold it down with 10. Eight, six, five, four, three, two, one, stand up tall, change over, change the legs over. Right leg this time. You can use the wall for balance if you need to. Right hand this time, okay? Three, two, one, up over. Drop that left elbow down. Lift the right arm up, hold here. Ready, and slowly come back out, drive through that stance leg, bring that elbow across, opposite knee, and back down we go again. All day, all day, push down through the ground. Ready, and drive through. Push through slow, elbow to knee, and then come back down last 10 seconds here. Back leg for balance, only no weight in the back leg, hold up the front leg. Three, two, one, and change over. Left leg this time, left leg again, seven sets. Ready? Onto that left leg, back leg doing nothing at all, right elbow. Find the knee pad. Hold here. Hold here. Rest down to the ground. Make the transition super good for stroll. All the way up and through. Elbow to knee, extend that back arm out. Hold here. Hold here. Hold here. Hold here and back to the go. Cross connect, lengthen that rib cage, get rotation to that spine, get rotation to that hips, so we're controlling all from the foot itself. Ready, drive through, swing the deeper slow. Extend the right arm out, pull the knee up, hold here, hold here. Five. Three, two, one, and come back there. Good job. Right foot again. All the way onto the right foot, up over on. No single leg stand position. Left elbow goes to these. Ready? Off the floor. Inside elbow goes to the knee. Ready? Drive, super slow, transition through. Right elbow, left knee. Hold here, hold here, and transition. Keep it slow, press the elbow into the knee. Drive through, cool, slow mark, slow motion running. Bring that shoulder across to the knee, bring the knee across to the shoulder. Three, two, one, and relax out there. Good work. One to go, guys. One to go. Last, last set inside, last exercise. Left leg, up, over. 
onto that leg, back leg does nothing. Bring the right elbow down, see that knee off the ground. And if your back leg can be down for balance, walk can be used for balance as well. Use whatever you feel you need to. Ready and drive up. Left elbow, right knee. Okay. And transition back down. Soft knee as you bend down. Right soft and right little track start almost. And drive through again. So all about movement, slow controlled movement. Rather than speed, going it slow. You can control the fast when you need to hold here. Three, two, and back there we come. Good job. Right leg. Last minute, last drill. Make it a good one. Ready? Up over on. Soften that knee, bring that elbow down. Right hand on the right hip, left elbow on the neck, and right knee. Left elbow, right knee. And transition to the floor. Just imagine that last 100 meter of the London Marathon. Just again, super slow motion. Speed it right up to the end. Switch it back down. Chariots of fire style. Hold here. Hold here. Hold here. Last 15 seconds, drive through slow. Make a full 15 seconds count. Five, three, two, and stand up. So, well done, guys. Good job. Excellent. Let's make pause the recording. Wow, good work. Really, really good. So the most important thing about the, the cross connect is we're starting to get that, that whole oblique system working. So the core working alongside the hips as well. And um, with the core drill we did today, we really try to get the hip flexors and quad working in the outer range. So you might have found that you get a little bit crampy in towards the, the top of what we call the inguinal crease. So if you do wish to later on go into like a, a long lunge stretch, go into like some sort of uh, cobra position to open up that front of the, the hips themselves. But that really good workout there for connecting the shoulders to the hips by going cross sling. And if, you, if you've got a spare five minutes yourself, you want to Google um, anatomy slings, you'll see a sling that wraps right from the shoulder to the opposite hip. So that's why sometimes if you get like a, a hip issue on the left-hand side, it can be your right shoulder starts to get really, really tight and sore as well, or you start to really um, fix through the opposite shoulder because it's trying to give you the stability that hip's losing. So if your arms aren't moving freely, sometimes it can be an issue around about the hips and vice versa. If the hips aren't moving freely, sometimes it can be a, an issue with the shoulder. Any questions, queries, or any concerns there, guys? Oh, good, oh, good. Well done, guys. Really good job, and good luck this, this weekend, Ian. Oh, thank you. Be that be that cow running down the streets. <laughs> Hi, Bill. Yeah, that's a good analogy. I like that one, James. I think the biggest thing is that this too shall pass. So if you're feeling great, hang in there because it'll pass. And if you're feeling terrible, hang in there because it'll pass too. And before you know it, you'll be looking <laughs> back on it as a memory rather than actually being in the moment. So enjoy every single second. Listen to all the shouts and taking all the noises, smells, and sights. Some of the smells are probably worse than others. <laughs> cheers, cheers, James. Take care, enjoy. Have a great weekend. Okay. Catch up next week. Cheers. Bye. Bye.